Thank you for joining us on uh, what was another all caps day here in the USA. Before we get into it, I want to mention that we lost another beloved American today, the great Eddie Van Halen, who we were lucky enough to have on our show. Remember Van Halen was here? They played outside. And I remember just watching rehearsal, and he just started noodling. He was just uh, testing the equipment, and it was like magic was coming out of his guitar. He, Eddie was a very nice and very funny guy. He lost a long and difficult battle with cancer. He'll be missed by many, and I know we all send our best to his family and friends. What a rotten year this has been. Every day, it's just another punch in the gut. But this morning, our president woke up and tweeted, feeling great, so that's good news. <laughs> he is uh, all hopped up on dexamethasone right now, and to prove it, he put out another I'm Physically Marvelous video today. I just left Walter Reed Medical Center, and it's really something very special. The doctors, the nurses, the first responders, and I learned so much about coronavirus. And one thing that's for certain, don't let it dominate you. Right. Just run out there and breathe it all in. Be a man, will you? Typhoid Donnie made a triumphant return to the White House last night with a dramatic balcony scene that only an egomaniac on massive amounts of drugs would ever even think to stage. Which is why people, you know, take great pains to protect themselves uh, in the hospital. But this is well, here obviously it's gonna sending come. Here a, we go. a, a very different... Takes it off. ...an incorrect message. And you see him here, um, he takes it off, and he's getting ready for his pictures. I haven't been this confused by a masked man on a balcony since Michael Jackson dangled that baby <laughs> off one. It's really a... Ducellini followed that performance with a video, a highly produced video, celebrating his return from the hospital, where, lest we forget, he was laid up because he is too dumb to wear a mask. You know what, it's, that was either the COVID or uh, Melania got hold of some blow darts. I don't know which, but that video is a bit much for, even for them, that's a, that is literally what they do in North Korea. The only difference is our president can't get up on a horse, but... <laughs> Trump was very anxious to leave the hospital. He was said to have been desperate to change the narrative, which that I can understand because he's laying in bed in the hospital watching this. President, 74 years old, not known for his healthy diet and exercising, considered obese. He is technically deemed uh, obese in terms of his weight. President Trump is a man in his 70s who is obese. He weighs 244 pounds, which means that he is clinically obese. Which does make him Obese. The medical definition of obesity. Overweight and obese. Technically obese. He is uh, obese. He is obese. 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 He is obese. Clinically obese. He's clinically obese. Clinically obese. He's clinically obese. Okay? He's a heavy guy. He's too heavy. Morbidly obese. He is uh, morbidly obese. I'm in great shape. <laughs> that shape is pear. So that's why he got out of the hospital. Trump says now that he learned a lot about COVID. He said, I learned it by really going to school. This is the real school. This isn't the let's read the book school. And I get it and I understand it. Oh, good. This guy has been surrounded by all the top infectious disease specialists, teams of scientists. He's had all the research, all the information, all the everything at his disposal since like January. More than 200,000 Americans died. Now he gets it. Did you notice that when it was his life in danger, he didn't consult that crazy doctor he retweeted who said COVID came from demon sperm? He didn't pop uh, hydroxychloroquine or inject bleach or bring diamond and silk in to sass the virus away. No, he relied on science to save him. Let's not forget that. When the man wanted to save his own life, he went straight to science. He had 10 doctors 
pumping his body with every drug available, and we paid for it. I'd say he got his $750 worth of tax money, for, right? But the good news is, he understands it now, he gets it. <laughs> he gets it now. My mom shouldn't know more about this virus than you do as president of the United States. And then later in the day, he uh, pulled the plug on the deal for a stimulus package that would help people who are still out of work. Says he won't even talk about a deal until after the election. It's like the country is being run by a monkey. Trump says, <laughs> Don't be afraid of COVID, even though that's exactly the opposite of what the experts are saying. But he's not alone with that sentiment because his old pal, Rudy Giuliani, guess what, agrees. Do you agree with the president's recent message of do not be afraid of COVID? Wow. Well, I mean, that's a, that's a message that could be historic. I mean, it reminds me of Roosevelt's message at the you know, beginning of his administration. The only thing you have to fear is fear itself. Yeah, right. <laughs> Except... Roosevelt was getting us out of a depression, not into one. I'm worried about Rudy Giuliani. You know, they say the virus doesn't affect vampires, but after seeing him on TV, I'm not so sure. I hear that response. You know, everybody questions the polls, but, but I Thank hope that cough is not anything you, bad. Where you're waiting for your test to come back, so uh, we hope you're going to be healthy and well. I hope so too. Yeah. Well, Rudy Giuliani puts the sick and sycophant. Do you think? Trump would even care if he gave the virus to Rudy. I can't help but feel like the answer is no. And by the way, in the there's a tweet for everything category, this is what then pretend millionaire Donald Trump had to say about a doctor who was carrying Ebola around New York back in 2014. I consider that doctor extremely selfish who came back and then he toured New York. I mean, he went on crowded subways during rush hour, had dinner in Brooklyn, went to a bowling alley and bowled, and went all over the place. That's I think right. he's a very selfish person. Well, that, I agree. By the way, another very selfish person is already planning to return to his rallies. He wrote, we'll be back on the campaign trail soon. The fake news only shows the fake polls. Right. So he's headed uh, back out on the road. It would appear that Trump's new campaign strategy is to kill his supporters before <laughs> they are able to vote for him. <laughs> Joe Biden right now is polling uh, well ahead of, of Trump, but anything can happen between now and Election Day. And if this year has taught us anything, it's that anything will happen. I still feel like Kanye could pull this out and win it. <laughs> Some Trump supporters have been competing to see who can come up with the most idiotic take on all of this. Honorable mention goes to Senator Kelly Leffler of Georgia, who wrote, remember, China gave this virus to our president and first lady Flotus. We must hold them accountable. Right. China flew over here and forced Trump to not wear a mask and go to a bunch of packed events. Blaming China for the fact that Trump has COVID is like blaming the fried chickens of Kentucky for getting him fat. Okay? But that wasn't the topper. The award for weakest spin of the week goes to press communications director Aaron Perini. He has experience as a businessman. He has experience now uh, fighting the coronavirus as an individual. Those firsthand experiences, Joe Biden, he doesn't have those. Wow. You know what? Let's just take a minute to appreciate that because it's so stupid. It, it's almost genius. S since Joe Biden stayed safe and listened to the experts, he didn't get infected. And so he doesn't have the experience now required to fight the vi How can you fight a disease if you've never had it? It'd be like trying to fight a fire if you'd never even burned your own house down. It's impossible. <laughs> but it's an original spin, and with not much else to point to, Team Trump is running with it. America needs an experienced leader. Donald Trump knows how to fight the coronavirus because he's done it himself. Trump knows how to help failing American businesses. After six bankruptcies, no one has failed in business more. Trump knows not to say nice things about Nazis. Very fine people on both sides. Because he did it one time and it didn't go well. Trump's experience running a fraudulent university taught him the pain of student debt. And only Donald Trump has the hands-on experience of paying off a porn star and then lying about it. So maybe that'll come in handy. When it comes to experience, only one man can make America great again. Because only one man f***ed it up in the first place. It is what it is. Donald Trump. Experience counts. Bing, bing, bong, bong, bing, bing, bing. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm sold.
Meanwhile, the cases of COVID are piling up in Washington. Another White House aide tested positive today. Uh, Stephen Miller, the evil slug that advises the president, tested positive today. Yesterday, Press Secretary Kayla uh, Macaroni Grill announced that she has COVID, which makes this nonsensical statement she made back in February extra foot and mouthy. Absolutely. This president will always put America first. He will always protect American citizens. We will not see diseases like the coronavirus come here. <laughs> Oops. Although, in fairness to Kaylee, um, she actually is right that you can't see the virus. It's tiny. It's even smaller than his hands. But now that she's got COVID, Kaylee has been forced to lie to America from her home. This was a novel virus that came in from China. No one had seen it. There were no tests. There were no therapeutics. In short order, President Trump developed them, and this vaccine is on pace to be the faxest vaccine for a novel pathogen in human history, and we can thank President Trump for all of that. <laughs> we can, really. This woman should not be working in the White House. This woman should be doing the weather in Jonesboro, Arkansas. She's... I mean, if you're going to lie on TV every day, just tell us it's going to be sunny. At least 13 people in the president's circle have tested positive. There is said to be fear and anger in the West Wing, which is a shame because the White House seemed like such a happy place to work before this. <laughs> Staffers are worried that the president could potentially expose them to the virus. Well, remember what a president exposing himself to the White House staff used to mean? Those were simple <laughs> times. They really were. The number of those infected keeps going up, which makes it especially challenging for the contract contact traders or tracers. What are they? Trader? They're, what are they, Guillermo? Uh, tracers. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You split the difference on yeah. that. Contact tracers that are assigned to the job. And we have one of them with us tonight, Dr. Edward Miller. Hello, Dr. Miller. Uh, thank you for joining us. Dr. Miller? Oh, uh... Uh, hey, Jimmy, I'm sorry. I'm just fielding a lot of calls right now. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to... Uh, no. Tell Kaylee that under no circumstances is she allowed to go to a bachelorette party in Cancun. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well... <laughs> my God. <laughs> sorry, what was your question? Oh, uh, no, I didn't, I, I didn't have a question. I was just wondering if you have an idea of how the, now the outbreak started. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, I wonder how it started. I wonder how a highly contagious virus managed to slip out into a group of anti-maskers at their say goodbye to healthcare garden party. Okay, but do you know who, do you have any idea who patient zero was? Could have been any of these imbeciles. I mean, take a look at this. If we assume that the person who spread the infection wasn't wearing a mask, it could be him, uh -huh. her, her, him, him, her, any of them. They're shoulder to shoulder like it's Coachella. Jeez. Oh, you need to get that? Okay, go ahead. No, Governor Christie, you cannot have your birthday dinner at Soup Plantation. <laughs> oh, my no, goodness. No, not there either. The hometown buffet isn't even open. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, it seems like at this point, I guess the goal probably is to identify who is infected and then quarantine them to make sure nobody else gets it, right? Yes. We're trying to protect the White House essential workers, housekeepers, chefs, Secret Service. We want to make sure that every American knows to keep their distance from the entire Republican Party until we have a vaccine. OK, I see. Sorry. Yeah. I have to go. This one is going to take a while. Oh, OK. Uh, sorry. Mayor Giuliani, for the last time, there is no medical reason why you should be drinking blood. <laughs> Well, that didn't take long at all there, doctor. <laughs> Eric, I don't know why your dad hugs Ivanka and not you. Maybe because he has COVID. OK, thank you, Dr. Miller. I appreciate your time. Dr. Miller, yes. Hey, Kellyanne, no, don't lick that. OK, you know what? Thank you, Dr. Miller. You know, a lot of people, that's Dr. Miller. He's a doctor. Uh, he works at the White House. And he's getting a lot of calls right now. He's super busy. Yeah, super busy. Yeah. Really busy, really. <laughs> phones are ringing off the hook. A lot of phones for one desk, right? Uh, yeah. Unbelievable. You know, people are saying, a lot of people are saying and writing a lot about this situation with our president and the pandemic right now. But no one, and I mean no one, summed it up better than Wendy Williams today, who said what I think we're all thinking right now. Oh, President Trump. Don't be afraid of Cornova. Mm -hmm. 
Don't let it dominate your life. Sir, are you serious? We are here out in the field. We are frightened of Cornova. <laughs> now we have to be frightened of Cornova too? What the hell is Cornova? Thanks for watching. If you liked that video, click the subscribe button. And if you didn't like it, well, you hurt my feelings.